In Mailshake 2.0, it's easy to create a new campaign. To do that, just click on Campaigns, then click on New Campaign. It's going to take you right into the Campaign Wizard. You can change things like your campaign title. Let's call this New Campaign. See who you want to assign it to. Anybody who you've added into Mailshake will be able to be assigned to this campaign. Then I can also connect or, sorry, select a email address that I want to use for sending, whichever ones I've already connected. And then I can change my friend name. Next, I'll click this next arrow so that I can go to the lead catcher. I can set what actions a prospect needs to take to become a lead. By default, we set it to one reply, pretty typical. If you'd like to add other actions like opens or clicks, you can do that as well. In this example, we'll stick with one reply since that's the most common. Next, we will select which apps we want to sync. So if we have any CRMs connected already, we can select which instance we want to sync to. You don't have to do this, uh, but if you already have your CRM connected, you'll be able to sync to one of those. Click Next, and now you can add any prospects. I'm going to click here to choose a file, select my file, and now I'm going to map my fields. This is an important step. We want to make sure that we're mapping columns in our data to the fields that Mailshake can use. So I'm going to see which column do I want to use for email. In this case, email is going to be the best bet. I'll go to prospect name, got full name, social media accounts. I've got LinkedIn on there, so I'm going to select that. And then for other fields, I've got phone number and company already automatically mapped. Just make sure that these are the ones you want. Then click import prospects to start processing that file. It might take just a couple minutes for it to process if you've got a larger file. For a smaller file, it should be quick like this. This file only has 10 prospects, so uh, it's going to tell me if there's any prospects that have a generic email address. I'll go ahead and remove them. So now I've only got nine that I'm importing. Highly recommend that you use our list cleaning tool. You do have included credits. If you're on our email outreach or sales engagement plan, you get new credits each month. So definitely recommend using this. For this example, I'm not going to go through it, but we recommend removing bad and risky emails. I'm going to click Next here, and I've got Sending Settings. I can track my opens and link clicks. I can also schedule this send if I wanted to schedule this in the future. Right now, I'm just going to set it up so that once I'm done, I can either choose to start sending it, or I'll just pause it and wait to do something later. So I'll click Next Step here. And now I want to build my sequence. Really great thing here is that you can either compose a message or you can import a sequence if you've already used um, a template before or something like that. So let's try importing a sequence. Let's take a look at maybe social selling outreach. We'll choose that. And I can go ahead and select the sequence if I wanted to use everything here. If I don't want to use a sequence, I can hit cancel and start composing a new message. So I'll just call this new message super interesting. Then here I can go ahead and start typing in my message. So maybe I want to say something like hi and I want to insert first name. To do that I'll click the insert drop down, select first name. I want to select a fallback text just in case they don't have a name there. So maybe I'll put something like there and click insert. That's going to put my nice text replacement in there. Highly recommend that you use this drop down versus manually typing that. I have a super interesting idea. Let me know if you have time to chat. Obviously, you're going to probably want to make sure that your message has a little bit more content than this. Just maybe some context, start off with uh, information that's going to probably entice your recipient to want to reply. I'll put thanks and then Trevor. If I have a signature, I can also leave this blank. I do have my signature set up already, something we cover in another video. But I'll just leave it like this. Then I can click Save. That's got my message here. So I can keep showing you how to build the rest of your campaign. I'm going to go ahead and add in a follow-up message. Follow-up message is a very easy way for you to set another message that will go out a few days after your initial message. You can add as many follow-ups as you'd like. 
So I could say something like, hi, just checking to see if you got my message. Obviously, this is an example, so this isn't the best example here, but it's just so that I can show you how you build out your campaigns. I'll leave that blank again. Now I'll click Create, and I can set how many days I want in between. So I can say, maybe I want four days in between. We usually say five days, though, so I'm going to stick with five days. Five days is a good rule of thumb. I can also add additional emails like an on click. So if I click on click here, I can send out a special email that's based on a link that might be in one of my previous messages. So if I, let's say, had a webinar or a podcast I wanted someone to check out, they clicked on that link, I could send out another email maybe that says, hey, notice that you sent out or that you checked out my new podcast, wondering what you think. That's something that you could do here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. We do uh, give you a little warning just in case you delete something you don't want to. Oh, let's just dismiss that. We'll hit cancel here because I think what happened here is that there's no uh, message. Uh, I haven't really actually saved it. All right, so the next step, we can personalize. So you know how I it, it, uh, added in that text replacement? It's going to show me that that actually worked here. I didn't use a text replacement in my second one. That's why I'm seeing hi there. But in the first one, it's automatically entering in Blair's name here. I can go through and see what this looks like for other recipients. And when I'm ready, I can just go ahead and click next step. That's going to take me to my uh, basically the confirmation page. It's going to show me what basic info I have here, um, any sequence, uh, like how much, how many emails are in my sequence, how many prospects are here. And then I can either start my campaign or I can scroll to the top and exit the campaign wizard. If I decide to exit the campaign wizard, it's going to leave my campaign in a draft mode so I can come back to it later. When I click on this, it takes me right back to that fifth confirm step. Now I'm ready to start my campaign. So I click start and it's on. And it's going to go ahead and queue this campaign up so that I can start sending. If I'm not ready to start sending, I can go ahead and turn it off so that it's not running. So there's a toggle right up here that allows you to turn off your campaign. And that's how you can create a campaign in Mailshake. We'll talk about things like A-B testing and reporting in other videos.